And we stayed there until 2015, when we expanded into the Sutherland industrial area where we are right now. And the vision of having one place that taught and inspired good movement and had clinicians that would bring their expertise from different perspectives. So we have chiropractic here, physiotherapy, naturopathic medicine, reflexology, Reiki, fascial stretch therapy. Um, we have a labor doula, we have a nutritionist, mental health services. And the kind of the keystone of my business is that unlike other businesses that might offer similar services, we spend all of our time focusing on how we can work together and become a customized, personalized team for our clients and patients. And we really can take them through um, their health and wellness journey, bringing people from reactive health, like I can't stand up, I need a chiropractor, to helping them realize that the body is meant to heal. And we're gonna to touch on that a little bit today. Um, so that is how my business has grown. I grew from a one woman show in Arbor Creek to a team of 47. And on March 18th at 2.30 in the afternoon, as I was listening to Scott Moe uh, give his address to the province, everything changed as it did for, for many of you. And so we have um, our team of 47 has decreased to a team of um, seven instructors and administrators. And I have uh, four of my clinicians who are still offering services via telehealth. So Dr. Willow, our naturopath, um, our labor doula, our nutritionist, and our mental health practitioner, Jen, they're able to work with telehealth. But you guys know, as business owners, we there's something in our DNA. It's that, it's that resilience. It's that, you know, fight kind of attitude that makes us successful and lets us, you know, ride the waves that that business is. And when that gets taken from you in a way without you having any control over, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow. And so uh, I've had many firsts over the past four weeks. Uh, my first layoffs, I never thought in a million years that I would be laying people off, I did that. Um, refinancing loans, you know, worked hard to make sure that would never have to happen. Well, that had to happen. Um, you know, managing our boys. So we have three teenage boys, one in first year university, one in grade 11, one in grade nine, as they transition to their at home schooling, that's been a challenge. And I even had my husband, Jason, color my hair last week because <laughs> it was, it was time. So, so lots of firsts. Um, what I want to, you know, now that you kind of know a little bit about me, what I would like to have you know is that I want you to leave here with some pragmatic strategies, some things that you can do for yourself, for your family, for your team, um, literally today. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to just open up my chat. And if you guys are interested in receiving, um, I've got a really cool toolkit that we've developed here at LEAD. One is for business owners and one is for your employees. And if you're interested in getting these toolkits, they're no charge. They're just packed full of resources and they're actually all free resources. Um, we're doing a lot of really cool things as we pivot to support this community. And if you're interested in receiving that, if you just go into your chat, the little chat bubble and just direct or message me directly with your email address, I'll make sure that you get the, both of those toolkits. And then I've got another kind of fun offer um, at the end as well. So let me ask you this. Um, if you could make an investment, a $1 investment to get $7 back, would you do that? And I know that everybody on this call, or if you're watching it on, as a recording, I know that you would say, yep, that sounds like a good deal. I will invest $1 to get $7 back. Well, basically that's what you get when you move your body. All right. So for every minute that you're moving your body, whether it is out for a walk, you know, doing yoga, walking on your treadmill, you know, doing a Pilates class, whatever it might be, for every one minute, you're getting seven minutes back in longevity. And so when you put it into those perspectives, um, 
And I know many of you have probably had many sleepless nights, have not probably been eating properly. You know, water, sleep maybe has been um, really gone down the tubes. Um, you can't support your business, your family, your employees like you need to if you're not taking care of yourself first. And I know that uh, we hear that, you know, when we're on an airplane, you hear that don your own mask before helping your helping others. And it's almost become a little cliche these last four weeks for sure. Um, but it is, it, it's really important. And so it doesn't take uh, we need to get past the point where we think we need to go and quote unquote work out or carve out that that 60 minutes of time for every minute you get seven minutes um, in longevity and I think that's a huge a huge indicator and you know only 25% of our longevity is determined by our genes the other 75% of our longevity is determined by lifestyle and environmental factors so when life throws us a curveball like it has now um, there's always there's always choices and we need to make sure that we're making good choices even though it might you might not feel like there's an immediate uh, result uh, the habits that you're building are going to serve you for a really long time. Now, a little history lesson here. In 1918, when the Spanish influenza um, pandemic went through worldwide, Joseph Pilates, who is the man who created the whole system of movement that we now know as Pilates, um, Joe was a young German man. He, it, the World War was going on at that time. Uh, he was interned in England at an internment camp and he, his job was that of like a physiotherapist assistant. And Joe was developing this form of movement that really focused on breathing diaphragmatically and moving our body in different ways based on how, uh, based on our spine, basically. So he believed that the health of our spine dictated the health of our body. And when you think about what we do all day long nowadays, which is sit, and I like to always talk about this in my workshops that I do. So if you're sitting during the day for hours and hours and hours, and then if you happen to be a, a side sleeper, so you're sleeping on your side with your knees bent, when you really think about the position of the body, you've just been sitting all day, and then you're sleeping all night in your side lying position, it's basically sitting just, just turned 90 degrees. So we spend a lot of time in this position, our muscles get very tight, our diaphragm is not being used properly, and this is what drastically impacts our health. You guys, we have an immunity system, and my husband and I were just listening to a webinar this morning or a, a video actually, and, and the doctor was just talking about like our immune system is built to take us through something like this. Now, yes, little asterisks. If you do have any kind of um, pre-existing condition, yeah, it's a completely different story. But we have built-in mechanisms in our body to be able to carry us through and the food we eat and the water we drink through a situation like this. All right. So I wanted to just share those few stats to kind of make my business case that there is a lot we can do in our control. We just have not, in most cases, made it a priority. I've had a lot of my clients or people reach out to me over the past month just saying, you know, this has been a wake up call for me, my kids schedule, my volunteer activities, you know, work that I'm doing, it's taking precedence and it's if I have time then I will, you know, get some, get some movement in, in my, in our, in my day. And I really hope that this situation, not just while it's going on and we're at home and we think we have more time, um, it needs to become a priority, um, hands down. So when you talk about, you know, what is your legacy in this moment of time, when you look back five years from now and you think about, you know, March, April, and May of 2020, um, what does your business look like? Is it, is it thriving? Have you pivoted? All those, you know, all those things that we need to consider as business owners. But what are we doing to make sure that, you know, the person behind the computer, behind the steering wheel, whatever, you know, wherever your work, um, your office is, what is that person doing to thrive? All right. So these are the pragmatic things um, gang that I that I want to leave you with these are part of the toolkit as well so you don't have to you know write all this down but I want to leave you with some really kind of things that make you go hmm that maybe you hadn't considered before that are very very simple all right so if you maybe haven't had 
a culture in your organization where health and wellness has been a priority or a pillar, now is a really opportune time as you are working through something that is less than normal to bring that into the fold. Um, the Saskatoon Public Schools actually for the first time in their history added wellness as a pillar in their strategic plan. So when you think about you know, a, a big institution like that, recognizing that wellness when it comes to physical, spiritual, and mental wellness has to be a part of being strategic as we go into the future. We've got an opportunity as, as small and medium-sized businesses to, to do the same and, and not jump on the bandwagon with it, um, but to do some, you know, small, basic, small little things that don't cost anything. So you guys, all these things that I'm going to share with you are not going to cost you a dime, which is important right now. Um, so hydration. First of all, uh, you need to make sure that you are hydrating your body. Now, did you know that our body uses water in a priority system? So first of all, our brain is the first part of our body to be hydrated. Our vital organs are next on the priority list. And then the tissues that make up our muscles, our bones, our joints are last. So if you think of it like a pyramid, the brain's at the top, vital organs are in the middle, the tissues that make up our muscles, bones, and joints are at the bottom. So what does that mean for you? If maybe you've grabbed your cup of coffee or your second or third cup of coffee prior to having a sip of water, it's actually going to really numb and dull that thirst mechanism. You're not going to even recognize, your brain's not even going to tell you that you're thirsty. And by the time it does, you're dehydrated. Um, when it's cold like this, minus 10 this morning, we don't crave water like we do if it was, you know, 20 degrees outside. So one of the very first things you can start to do is to hydrate your body. A cell, so if you think of self-care, I want to talk to you today about cell care, the trillions of cells that make up our body. If they are not flourishing to do their job as part of whatever system they are, you know, they're responsible for, you are going to experience things like brain fog. Okay. You know, where did I put my keys or where's my phone? Or, you know, you get, you get distracted if you're working on budgets or things like that. So hydration really does make a huge difference and hydration. If you can start earlier in your day, that's even better because it's going to wake up that thirst mechanism and it's going to have you reaching for your water throughout the day. Now the strategy, if you're not a water drinker, don't go full out starting today or tomorrow because your bladder is not going to love you and you're not going to stick with it, right? It's consistency that's key. So we want to make sure that we're just upping our hydration a little bit every week. And I will tell all the coffee lovers out there that two cups of coffee or 16 ounces actually can be counted into your hydration formula for the day. Once you go beyond those three cups, or if you like caffeinated teas, um, Red Bulls, those kinds of things. Once you get beyond the 16 ounces, those drinks are actually working as a diuretic. So they are dehydrating your body and making you feel kind of that sluggish, um, sluggish feeling. And I'll tell you this, I know none of us have been able to get to our massage therapist or chiropractor, physiotherapist in a month. Uh, you might be doing some telehealth with that, but not true hands-on. And our bodies are tight our bodies were a little bit more stressed. Um, and so hydration, if you're looking to heal, hydration is, is key. All right. So that's my first little, little takeaway gem breathing. All right. If you watch a newborn baby breathe, their belly rises and falls with every single breath. That's really how we need to be breathing. Um, especially as we've been doing things like refinancing loans and, you know, checking in with our landlords to see how we can manage lease payments and things like that. We tend to breathe, um, just very shallowly and you know what, you, what that does you guys is it really flips the switch on to what's called our uh, sympathetic nervous system and that is the fight or flight part of our nervous system now if we were living in the caveman days and we heard wrestling in the bushes that's when we really need our sympathetic nervous system to be that it's kind of like that spidey sense like I, I think I got to get out of here we do need that part of our nervous system, but it has been so jacked up over these last four and five weeks that it impacts everything we do. You might find yourself talking faster, eating faster, taking longer to fall asleep at night. That is a function of your nervous system. So what is the fix? How do you nurture? The other half of the nervous system is called the parasympathetic. We call that rest and digest. Simple things like putting your fork down when you're eating at, you know, during a meal so that you can take extra time to 
bring yourself into more of a parasympathetic system or state. The breathing I'm talking about is very simply executed. One hand on your sternum, one hand on your belly button. It's an inhale through your nose like you're smelling a fresh baked apple pie. It's an exhale out of your mouth like you are um, fogging up a mirror or if you didn't have mitts this morning, it just an, it's an HA kind of sound. 10 of those breaths in the morning, 10 before you go to bed, or if you've got you know big meetings coming up, to bring yourself out of the sympathetic chaos. I sometimes call it the tornado. You need to really tap into your breath. Okay, it's, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely critical. Um, your seated and standing posture is also really important. I know that a lot of workplaces have fancy sit down, stand up desks. And now we find ourselves and our, our team, some of our team might be at home. Some of them still might be at work. And so, you know, how do you support them or teach them about posture? Because I'll tell you this, when we are out of alignment, did you guys know that osteoarthritis, and some of you on the call might, might have it or might know of someone that has osteoarthritis, um, it is not a genetic condition. A lot of us think that arthritis, osteoarthritis is a genetic condition because our dad might have it or our grandma might have it, but it actually is a function of posture and our body being out of alignment for decades and decades and decades. And of course, as we age, the gravity that's been on our planet that has been working on our body for X number of years that we've been on this planet, it starts to break us down at our joint structures. All right. So there are things you can do, you know, with your posture, um, in your toolkit, I've actually got some free videos about posture that you and your team are going to be able to download really quick videos um, that you can see and start to kind of change, change your situation um, in, that, in that way as well. You want to be making your workspace dynamic, all right? So instead of sitting all day long, and you know what, I'm going to be really... Um, honest here, you guys, what I'm presenting to you today is like 99% of what I would have presented to you if you would have brought me into your workplace in January or last summer. It's, it's all health and wellness stuff. There's nothing pandemic driven here. It's just basic health and wellness 101 that doesn't need to take extra time in your day. It just needs to become a part of your thought process and then you start living it, right? We know it takes 21 days to build a habit, 90 days to build a lifestyle and you don't need the hour a day. Like what I've been telling people is if you can carve out 15 minutes once or twice a day, that's literally all you need to clear your head to make good business decisions in this crazy time. I read once that the reason Barack Obama wore the same clothes every day, same color tie, same white shirt, was because we really only have the capacity to make 20 very good decisions in our day. So if you have to decide what you're gonna wear, you might be using up one of those 20. And so I mentioned that because it's, it's, a, it's about habits. It's about forming habits and patterns. And as leaders of your organization, um, I hope you realize how much of a important role you play in this arena. Okay. Modeling the behavior is key. It's really challenging to be talking about health and wellness. And then you might have a vending machine that has nothing but you know, chips and pop in it. Or every time you do a lunch and learn, you know, you're bringing in food that maybe isn't truly, um, you know, fueling your team's body like it should. All right. Um, blood flow. Okay. Blood flow is key. I know some of you, just like me, you kind of start to feel like the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz after. Um, <laughs> after a really big rain, things are just more achy. And I don't know about you, but I feel like, and Keith and I were kind of talking about this before we went live, was that we both are busier now than we were before. Doesn't mean that we're generating anywhere near the revenue. And in fact, in my business, when the clinic shut overnight, like 70% of my revenue went away. So I've had to find new ways and have I replaced it yet? No, not even close, but um, I need to make sure that I can show up every day. And I'm gonna share some of the tricks that I've been playing with my brain and how I've been kind of working through my day-to-day -day, um, habit training and management. Blood flow is one of the most important things in our body. And when we're sitting so much, did you guys know that after one hour of sitting, so if you're sitting for one hour continuously, the blood flow to your legs has decreased by 50%. 
right? So you get up and again, you kind of feel like it takes the first couple of steps before you can start to move freely again. That is just physically from if you were in the summertime when we're watering our pots of flowers in our backyard and we kind of kink the garden hose to get to the next pot of flowers or our garden, that's basically what's happening at our hips is that that garden hose, that blood flow is being decreased. Tissue can't live when there is a lack of blood flow, all right? So those sore knees, sore hips, um, maybe things like plantar fasciitis, uh, you know, if and those are going to be the things that are going to start to, you know, get heightened as far as pain, because we're not doing what we can to give our body a chance in our naturally, naturally ways of healing when blood flow isn't there. Simple things. If you don't have a foam roller, don't have to go out and buy one. You guys take a, a rolling pin or a piece of, if you have, I don't, if you're, if you have a piece of PVC pipe, um, a broomstick, anything like that. And you're literally just going to be rubbing the broomstick or the rolling pin up and down your legs. Uh, you can lay on your rolling pin on the side of your leg between your knee and your hip, roll up and down for four or five minutes over. If, if you do that every day for a week, I promise you any knee discomfort that you've been experiencing is going to decrease. Okay. It's just a function of that big tight IT band that is pulling on the knee and compromising it. All right. So a lot of really basic things um, that you that you can be that you can be doing in our body, we've got a tissue called fascia. Now fascia is unlike muscle tissue. And if you're someone that has never been able to touch your toes, if you try this, probably by the weekend, you'll be at least halfway closer to touching your toes, if not having your fingers on the ground. Um, I once read a research article that said the longevity of your body is determined by the ability to touch your toes. <laughs> and if you cannot touch your toes, that's a really big problem because everything is getting tighter. And when things get tighter, it impacts our the organ function, our whole visceral system, which is all of our organs. It has to work much harder to do the digesting and the elimination and the respiration and the circulation, all those things that we know we need for our immunity. All right. So uh, this fascial tissue, it sticks to muscle fibers, organs, bones at the force of about 2000 pounds per square inch. So a lot of force. You can stretch till the cows come home, but I promise you that is not going to change your long-term flexibility and joint range of motion. All right. Um, anybody with frozen shoulder, working with a tennis ball, a pinky ball through the back kind of if you follow the line of your shoulder blade up against a wall or laying down on the floor, it can be an absolute game changer for you. All right. Um, blood flow and this fascial release work is absolutely, um, yeah, it just, it can kind of change the game for you. I touched base with my sister. So my sister um, owns Sleepwell Consulting. And so she is a sleep expert. And I said, you know what, I'm doing this webinar today. I want to include a little bit on sleep in my, uh, in my webinar because I know that we're not getting the quality of sleep now maybe than we, than we have. Or maybe you have never been a, a really big sleeper. And I said, what would be your one main takeaway? And what Amanda told me is she said, you know, the biggest thing I would say is getting off of our tech an hour before we want to be sleeping is really key because of the you know the light that is emitted from our tech it really impacts our melatonin production the melatonin production ebbs and flows during the day to make us um you know our natural circadian rhythm is going to be impacted by that so that was her one big takeaway she said tv is a different is you know it's kind of a different ball game because the tv tends to be a certain distance away from you um but it's just having that laptop or phone or tablet right in front of you that can really really impact you and in fact um one of her presentations i was at she was talking about um social jet lag and the idea of social jet lag is when we use our devices okay and we shut them off and then our head hits the pillow and we expect the phases of sleep to just come to us and to work through those phases of sleep we should have about three of those in a night um 
but that's not the case. So I, I believe it was a two week study of people who were on their devices immediately before bed versus those that turned off an hour before bed. And what it actually showed was those who had their devices on right before bed and then went to sleep or tried to go to sleep, um, their body was fighting the equivalent of a four hour time zone jet lag. And you guys know what that feels like if you've been flying, but just because we haven't been flying doesn't mean that our body isn't experiencing some of those very same um, si situations as, as true jet lag, all right? So I hope that there are a few little gems there. Maybe you didn't know some of that, you know, the way hydration is used in our body or the, the importance of blood flow. Um, this is really key for you, for your health. I mean, if you don't have your health, you only have one. You only, there's only one of you, one body, and we have to really nurture it and protect it right now. A couple of years ago, I was doing some corporate wellness work with a company from outside of Saskatoon, and um, they approached me because their goal over the next three years, they wanted to triple their business, all right? Um, and they were in the manufacturing uh, industry. And they wanted to triple their business, but the owner of the company had just, was just coming off of, you know, kind of a six month post heart attack anniversary. And four of the other six members of their senior leadership had also had a heart, some sort of a heart episode. So they reached out to me because they realized that if they're, if they truly were going to triple their business in the next three years, they needed to do something to make sure that they were actually physically still on this earth to be able to see that happen. So what we hate to see is an episode like that make someone stop and realize that they need to make some changes. And you know what, gang, like this isn't, these aren't wholesale changes, right? Like these aren't, I'm going this way and now I have to go this way. These are small little pivots that will improve um, really everything about your life. And I think it's, it's awesome that we have benefits programs and you know, EFAP programs that we can make sure our teams are accessing. But you know, honestly, you know, how, many, how many are? And if we don't help people understand the why behind simple things like hydration, simple things like posture, it's not going to resonate with them. It's just going to be something, yeah, yeah, my mom talked to me about posture. My teachers told me to sit up straight in my desk when I was, you know, back in school. That's, that's kind of what, what I think about when I think about posture. So it is a really good time to start thinking about how can I start to weave a little bit of this into my business, my lifestyle, my organization, um, and have my team know just how important I know they are um, in being able to offer them some of this education. Because you know what, it doesn't, it doesn't start and stop from 8.30 to 4.30 or you know, whatever the shifts of your, of your company are, it goes well beyond that. And what, one of the things I always like to say to business owners is that we have a responsibility, you know, beyond the economic impact that we bring to, you know, the province and our country and the world, there are people who have chosen to come along with us on this ride. And there comes that sense of responsibility. And yes, and there's a choice, right, all the time. And that's why I love things like, you know, cost sharing health and wellness programs are great, right? Because it makes the employee also step up. But um, when you get your toolkit, if you're interested, again, don't forget to, you know, send me um, an email. I can also, while I'm just thinking about it, I will just pop my email into the chat and um, you can always get back to me with that, with that request. Um, Now's a really now's a really good time to to think about this. All right. So in your toolkit, I want to mention a few things. We are doing right now uh, ten different free.
Facebook live shows in a week. All right. We're doing, we have two, one of my massage therapists is doing a meditation 20 minutes, Mondays and Fridays at 5 PM. Reed, who is our fascial stretch therapist does a whole awesome half hour stretch um, show Tuesdays and Thursdays at 4 p.m. I mean, all of this schedule will be in your toolkit. Jen, our, our counselor, does a show called Mind Your Body. She just talked on Monday all about managing school and work and, and how does that look and feel. So you guys, there's these free resources that we would love you to pass on to your employees because it's a way that actually we've shifted our business. And um, I can and we, we call it Lead TV. And I can tell you right now, Lead TV will continue once our doors are open and people are coming back through to our clinic and the studio, uh, Lead TV will continue because it was something that came out of a necessity for us to stay front of mind in our clients and patients, um, well, minds. And it's been amazing. It's been amazing for us. In that toolkit is also going to be some free downloadable videos from my online studio called the Meta District. Um, I launched my online studio last September. And it's really interesting because I've had people say to me, you know, now, um, that was so, <laughs> Jana, you were so insightful that, you know, you got that ready six months ago in preparation. And I was like, <laughs> there wasn't, when I made my list of why I wanted to start an online part of my business, the word pandemic did not show up on that list. I can, I can tell you that right now. Um, so lots of free, um, free resources for you. I'm also going to list the clinicians of ours who are offering telehealth that if your benefits programs are still going, they can access, they can access that as well. Um, and then just before I wrap, if there's any questions, I told you I was going to tell you kind of two brain tricks that I've been using for myself. Um, prior to uh, March 18th, I had this little mantra that I would say every morning to myself, I would always say, Clarity creates confidence and confidence creates clarity. And I would just repeat that just to myself in my head every day as I walked from our bedroom down into the kitchen to start my day. And it really was, it's just, it's a mindset thing for me. I really love reading um, the work by, by Brendan Burchard. If you guys don't know Brendan Burchard, he's a high performance coach and he has really awesome material that is easy to kind of sink your teeth into and so and that was kind of my mindset setting exercise for the day and you know what as business owners we know that's you know we have to ebb and flow one minute to the next it can be awesome and then really crappy um but i had to change my mantra because when i drove home when i i was the last person to leave lead the night of the 18th where we you know had to have a big communication plan we got everything out to our staff our clients our patients that we were then you know as of now close to the public i had my little cry because it was eerily quiet and i didn't know in my head when there would be action again and the next day i just started thinking today I get to turn lemons into lemonade. So that's what I've been saying for almost the past month every morning. Today I get to turn lemons into lemonade and it's brought some new ideas. It's brought some new opportunities. As we know, you know, not everything we throw at the wall as business owner sticks. I don't know what's going to stick and what's going to continue, but that's been one of literally one of my brain tricks um, because it's really easy as you know, to get stuck in the mud. And it's hard to be a leader when we're stuck in the mud. The other thing that I do is I literally walk through our space every day. Like I, I will walk into all 13 of the treatment rooms. I walk into both reception areas. I look at the chairs in our little foyers. I walk into each of our studio spaces. I look at all of our Pilates equipment that hasn't been used for a month. And I visualize people back in the space. I visualize them getting massages and, um, you know, coming to get acupuncture and nutrition advice and doing their block therapy classes and and that honestly has been one of the other things for me that has really kept me focusing on what will be as as we get past the what is so um i am going to i guess open if there are any questions at all please um 
you know, let me, let me know. If you're interested in getting the employee toolkit or the, actually, I'm, if you're interested, I'm just going to send them both to you. The other thing that I want to offer everybody, because I know that, you know, budgets now more than ever are really important is I'm happy to offer I, I have like a, a limited supply of these. So if you're, if you're interested, please reach out as soon as you can. I'm happy to do like a 30 minute webinar with your team, whether you want it to be more movement focused or something similar to this with just some real pragmatic information. Um, I'm happy to offer that. So if you are interested in doing that over the next, you know, week or two, please reach out and let me know. And, um, yeah, I'm just happy to bring my knowledge to you and your team and support you in um, in this little blip. We hope it's a little blip as we kind of plan for the future and, and you know, hope for the best. So with that, Keith, do I turn things over to you? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm back here, <clears throat> excuse me, and have been listening uh, intently, Jana, and I always have uh, <laughs> uh, multitudes of questions, uh, especially for you. Um, so when we were in your... Um, uh, facility some time ago with our team you had these little pink balls and I think mm. you just called them pinkies or something like that like Pinky that balls, yeah. health thing um, okay so can you maybe describe the the benefit of doing that ball roll on people's feet and so on yeah for sure you know what I'm just going to quickly select Janelle and have her bring me one in here to show you um, so Keith, basically what you're talking about is the blood flow kind of gem that I um, talked about before. And so these little pinky balls are specially designed. We sell them here for $12. You can use a tennis ball. My personal, people also use lacrosse balls or golf balls. I don't love that. The nervous system doesn't love that. Um, but basically the concept is that it creates an environment for fascia release. Um, it doesn't feel great. So those of you that have, have done like some ball rolling or even foam rolling, what, what it does is it works to break down some of those restrictions of that fascial tissue that literally sticks at that 2000 pounds per square inch. A stretch, so if I'm stretching my arm here, let's say my pecs and chest are really tight, I can feel a muscular stretch, but that fascia is actually like a boa constrictor snake that is surrounding every muscle fiber we have, every organ we have, and it's eliminating blood flow. So that's a huge problem because our muscles can't thrive. Muscle fiber can't thrive without blood flow. That's, it's almost like if you didn't water a plant for a month, that the leaves of that plant, the vigor of that plant is gonna be negatively impacted. When you roll through your feet, it actually takes those fascial webbing. So it's like, fascia is like a web, like a spider web. It's not like muscle that starts and ends at a joint. It literally goes from the bottoms of our feet up around our head attaches underneath our eye sockets so even if someone is like kind of low grade headache you could use a ball on your forehead and that will you know if it's that kind of that your eyes are sunk in sensation when you've been in front of a computer for a long time the pinky ball you can work your feet if you have sciatic pain you can roll your glutes if you've been typing all day roll through your hands a lot of our shoulder and upper neck tension you guys actually comes from the forearm and the hands because these joints we have so many joints they're meant for moving they're meant for like manual labor those kinds of things not sitting and doing this all day long okay so understand that and you know i'm glad you asked this question keith because we are conditioned when we experience pain or discomfort we go to that spot i want you to think beyond that you might have um thank you you might have um a headache but it might be stemming from your shoulder blade so if you think about what is my pain point how can i work around that that's really that's that's key all right so janelle just brought me in a little pinky ball this is what it is like i said headaches shoulder upper neck tension you can lay on it on your tummy feet side of the leg um and like i said if you don't have a pinky ball tennis ball is your best bet or honestly you guys a rolling pin pvc pipe a broomstick will do a very similar um have very, very similar benefits awesome thank you yeah. um I see a few people have signed up for the uh, toolkit. So just a yeah. reminder to use the chat uh, uh, area folks and uh, the Q&A area as well. You can also raise your hand and I'll uh, unmute your mic so you can ask a question as I am of Jana right now. So um, my next question is, 
with the current environment, you know, a lot of people working out of their homes or remotely in, in certain areas. Do you think this, um, when you talk about making uh, lemonade out of lemons, provides an opportunity for people to perhaps uh, adjust their usual routine differently to incorporate that 15 or 20 or 30 minute, whatever workout or, or movement during yeah. the uh, well, you know, absolutely. And I think, I mean, one of the questions, because I've been getting questions from even a lot of my friends who own businesses and they're like, how can I, how can I coach my employees on this? Like I, you know, with, when people are working from home, they might not start at 8.30 and end at 4.30. They might feel like they have to contribute more to help us out as the business owners. And so, you know, what can they be doing from a, from a scheduling perspective? And that's important, right? We are, we are creatures of habit humans excel when there's some framework um and and some more than others some just need their structure or they things kind of go downhill for them very quickly and so yeah there's a huge opportunity here and i know some workplaces are doing kind of like they have scheduled check-ins um on zoom or uh you know google hangouts and things like that where they actually do come together and do a little bit of movement um, during the day as something that's scheduled just to bring to bring people together but i think yeah as business owners and as leaders you know in our organizations offering some of that um as as ideas can really go a long way to ensuring that those people who are remote especially if you have a hybrid team right now and you have some people like me so some people are physically here and some i haven't seen in five weeks um, we have actually, we're using Slack. It's a free messaging system. Some of you guys might use Slack. We just wanted to stay off of our personal texting. Slack is amazing, you guys. We started a channel called Why We Thrive, and people are sending pictures of what they're doing during their day for activity, what they're making, what their kids are doing. And it's a way for us. Like I've had many of my staff reach out separately and saying like that Why We Thrive Slack channel is has helped me through so many of my darker days because I just, I feel like I'm still a part of the team at lead. And that's, what's important. We are so, we identify so much by our role, our organization, what we do for our communities. And when that's kind of been taken away, cause we're scattered all over these pieces of movement. And that's why I love to use, I forget the word exercise. Okay. Exercise comes from the classic fitness industry where we have to check the box. I did my weights. I did my right. But what does your body learn? How does your brain feel after that? Do you have more clarity or are you, did you just check the box? Um, and it's got to be more than just checking the box. Now you guys, it has to, we have to make this a priority. Um, and again, if you were making an investment in a $1 investment to get that $7 return, it seems like a no brainer. Absolutely. Um, so my home office is um, probably like a lot of people's home office in that it's uh, functional, but maybe not uh, ergonomically mm -hmm. yeah. great. Uh, do you have any recommendations for how to adapt things so that it'll be a little bit more ergonomic for you? Yeah, I do. And you know what, here's the other thing. This is where my world of HR consulting and, you know, Pilates and movement kind of collide. And I love, I love this space. Um, and I kind of, I kind of alluded to it during the webinar is that even if you had a fancy sit down, stand up desk at work, and you're now at home at your kitchen table, you know what the biggest thing is, everybody is that even with the best ergonomics, do you know what the most important piece of that pie is that we don't look at when you might, you know, you might get an ergonomic assessment in and we're looking at the angle of your knee and your hip in relation to each other and where is your keyboard tray? You know what the most important thing is, is this person behind that desk equipment or so what I always say is if you're, you know, schlumpy doing this at your stand up desk, it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter if your desk moves or it doesn't matter if you're at a cardboard box. It doesn't matter. What matters is this. So what I've been saying um, all along is make your workstation dynamic. You have to move at least every hour to get that blood flow back to your, um, to your legs. So, you know, move around at home, be in your home office. And then do you know what one of the best things to do is, is to get down on the floor for even if it's only like five minutes or tonight have a picnic on the floor. Um, when we change the way our hips bear weight, not sitting in a chair, um, 
not sitting on a couch, but actually being on the floor, it really does a lot to open up that, you know, that joint structure. It brings some different blood flow into that area. You might not be able to sustain it for a long time, but move around, sit with your legs in front of you, grab a cushion, prop yourself up. So that's my biggest takeaway. Sometimes take your computer, put it on your kitchen, you know, the island in your kitchen, work standing for a while, the more you can add that movement into your day. And then guess what? The, when you're standing, you can practice your standing posture, which is in the toolkit. When you're sitting, you, I'll, I'll teach you through the videos in the toolkit, like this is what it's supposed to feel like. Oh, okay, I gotta put my head on my invisible headrest because I look like a Pez dispenser candy machine, right? So, um, so that's what I've been recommending as far as at home workstations, which is once we're back at work is exactly what I would recommend, you know, when we're at work, get up, move around, put a phone call on, you know, use your speaker phone, walk around in your workspace while you're on the phone, just be moving. Um, brain fog is another brain fog and headaches. I've been getting a lot of questions about that too. Do you know what? There was research done in the U S two years ago and, um, what it found was that 80% of our vision happens within 20 inches of our nose. So 80% of our day is here. And that's because there's so many amazing things that happen beyond 20 inches. So what the research found was, what is the fix? The fix is for 20 seconds, every 20 minutes, or for a minute, every hour, look up from your screen. Even if you're in a small little room, look, look at the, paint color, look at the texture of the ceiling, like look, move your eyes, 20 seconds, come back, and that actually resets the musculature around the eyes to, and over time, that brain fog will start to go away because brain fog is a function of all these muscles with this fascia being stuck. That makes a lot of sense to me yeah, for someone easy. that spends so much time yeah, in that 20 inch Exactly, boundary. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I don't wanna, dominate the questions, but I don't see any other ones coming in, but um, I would encourage everybody, if you have a question, please uh, forward it on to Jana or myself. Um, and I guess, you know, another question that I had for you in terms of the ergonomic design is, um, so I have a, like an exercise ball, like a big, you know, one of those big bouncy yep. mm -hmm. balls. Is that a good option for a, a chair, desk yep. chair kind of thing? Yep. For sure. It is a really good option because it's providing, it's, it's unstable, right? So unlike your chair with four legs, that's stable. You could be like curled up in a ball and you're not going to, the chair is not going to go anywhere. All right. What the ball does is it provides a little bit of instability. So what's important to know when you're on the ball is that um, if you were to add like little movements, like we, we call them pelvic curls, right? And so the ability to move the low back, the, the five little lumbar vertebrae of the low back, it really impacts um, kind of that hip knee low back area from a pain perspective so even like little tiny it just it's kind of like rolling the ball forward three or four inches and rolling it back so if you did that you know for a minute and then went and you know went ahead and we're working on it yeah ball the ball is great again just make sure that you have some purpose to your body um and then little things like you can lift up one foot and then lift up the other foot and you know add a little bit of rotation the pilates recipe you guys when i talked about joseph pilates and the health of our spine there's five spinal movements we should be going through every day one is the little tuck of the tailbone called flexion one is looking up to the ceiling and not just hanging our head off of our spine but almost like we're zipping up a jacket and looking up to the ceiling that's extension we need to rotate we need to side bend and we need to invert our spine now what does that mean it means you get on the floor and you lift your hips off the floor like a bridge. Gravity can work on our blood flow and our spinal fluid in a different way. So that's as simple as the recipe is. Like you tuck your tailbone, you look at the sky, you do a few shoulder checks, you bend to the side and you do a few bridges. And I, I mean, Joe really was ahead of his time. When he moved to the US after the pandemic passed, he ended up in New York City. He actually, in the 1960s, wrote a letter to President Kennedy. And I actually saw a copy of this letter in a presentation I was at once. And he's, he believed that he was very German and he was very set in his ways. And he believed that if everybody did his method of movement with the diaphragmatic breathing and all the spinal movements, he, he said in the letter, it would help um, socioeconomic issues in the US, it would improve health, like the, it, he just went through all of these. And you know, he's, he's not that far off because when we are not fundamentally, I mean, 
the first and the last act of our lives is breathing. We breathe a first breath when we're born, last breath before we, you know, go on to the next space. And somewhere in between, we have forgotten how to do that. And our cells that make up our body cannot function. And when they don't function, they are dis they're in dysfunction. And when they're dysfunctioning, it's not easy. It creates disease or disease. So it's again, it's, it's, it's simple. You don't have to wait in line at a pharmacy for anything like that. It really is just breathing, drinking your water, paying attention to your body, moving it every once in a while. And um, I wish there was something more complicated to it, but it's not. No. <laughs> That's great advice, Jana. Thank you very much. Um, I don't want to uh, continue just dominating questions and because uh, I could keep you going for a couple yeah. hours. <laughs> and I know that we're uh, going coming up to our one hour time. And as you and I know, we've been uh, sitting here for longer than an hour ourselves in preparation for this. So it's probably time that we time to move. check out yeah. and move. Um, <laughs> so um, I'll just turn it to you for any last uh, comments you may have before uh, signing off myself. So I'll just anything you want to close sure. no you know what i mean i just i hope i hope that you know everyone that's been here live and if you're watching it in a recording i hope you've taken something away um i didn't anticipate you know to build have a career change and build a business on on health and wellness and helping people get out of you know pain cycles and 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 our, our why here at LEAD is to educate, inspire, and move. And those are the three things that we aim to do every single time we reach out to a person, a group. And so if there's any way that I can help, um, I know there's a few of you that have chatted privately to me and then, pub, so I have, a, I have screenshots of this. I'll be getting in touch with you with the toolkits. And if you're watching this on the recording, you see my email there, please reach out. And you guys, honestly, please take advantage. The offer is out there. I'm happy to give you 30 minutes of my time with your team. And sometimes it's these little things like that that go a long way as far as, um, you know, bringing that engagement and that feel good vibe that you have when you're in your workspace. And that's something that I'm not gonna take for granted ever again, right? I think we have a list of things that we're just really gonna enjoy a little bit more. Um, and that's one of them, just being all in the same space. So thanks again, Keith, for, for the opportunity. And um, you know, hopefully I've left people with some food for thought. Absolutely, well, it's our pleasure, Jana. Thank you so much. Uh, I can't uh, express my gratitude enough to you because uh, as I mentioned to you from a personal perspective, uh, just our, our pre uh, preparation for this uh, webinar today got me moving this morning, which is, uh, awesome. yeah, it, it's awesome. So you are inspirational Good. and I appreciate that in you. And uh, also I know that everybody that's watching today is appreciative of your um, education and information and advice. And uh, as Jana said, if you have any um, desire to continue on, uh, her email address is available and uh, some toolkits are available as well. And I would encourage you to follow up in that way. It's, uh, it's fantastic for you. I know you'll feel better as a result. So mm -hmm. thank you once again, Jana. You're welcome. Um, and I just want to remind everybody else as well that our uh, webinar series continues this Friday. Uh, we have uh, Ryan Layback of Zoo. Uh, giving a presentation um, with regards to technology. I'm not exactly sure what it is right now, but it's not in front of me, but uh, I'm sure it'll be wonderful information for you as well. And uh, until then, and uh, until next time we see you again, take care, everybody, and uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah.